Make no mistake, prices are still too high. We have a lot more work to do, but things are getting better, headed in the right direction. Most Americans can see the progress. But what is clear is that my economic plan is working, and we're just getting started. So that was about 30 minutes ago. The president there taking a victory lap, and new inflation numbers for November are out, and they show the prices rose by 7.1 percent year over year. It's a small dip from 7.7 percent increase in October. And families who don't live in the White House, meaning everybody else in America, still feels the pain of high prices. Many household items are still dramatically more expensive, adding to American struggles this holiday season. Food staples, you know my favorite meal is breakfast, and it's still up. Eggs, butter, flour, painfully pricey. Republican lawmakers point the finger at the blue team. This inflation crisis that Joe Biden and one party Democrat rule in Washington created is going to give every American a blue Christmas. That is for sure. The price of Christmas trees have gone up. The price for presidents, presents under those Christmas trees have gone up to put food on their table and clothes on their backs and, and, and gasoline in their car. Everything's costing more. Forbes.com also questions optimism with this headline. The coming CPI inflation report will be sketchy. So view media and market reactions skeptically. Steve Forbes himself is here, Forbes media chairman and editor in chief. Good to see you. Good Steve, to see you. why do we not trust in what we're about to see with the CPI index? Uh, because they, uh, it, it volatile from month to month. But the fact of the matter is prices are still going up, as Larry Kudlow pointed out earlier. And this fall in gasoline prices is in part because they're draining the strategic petroleum reserve. That can't go on forever. They're still suppressing energy output here in the United States. And the only way they're going to be getting prices down further is by depressing the economy. Wages are starting to go up. The Fed does not think that's a good thing. They want to suppress wages. The only way they know how to fight inflation is by making people poorer. <clears throat> so that's why you take mm. these things with a grain of salt. So the Fed's going to raise interest rates by half a point uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're supposed to be happy that it's only 50 basis points, but the direction is still up. So the economy still has rough sledding. So whether you look at a CPI number, people's standard of living is going to take a hit next year. That's the bottom line. What does rough sledding feel like compared with where we are now? It means you're going to be worse off six or nine months from now than you are today. You're going to be That will have been two years almost. And, 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 that's, the, and that's, that's the crazy thing. This stagnation, like you've had in Europe, where they think one or two percent growth is yeah. the norm, we usually grow three or four. We're going in the European direction of slow stagnation, which is what we had before 2017, before we got deregulation, big tax cuts and other things. And that's why I think 2024 is going to be so important election. So Which policies do we adopt, pro-growth or stagnation? How do we, and I don't want to mix too many apples and oranges here, but I have to go there with this. How do we absorb millions of people then coming into this country on our southern border, and I mean millions? possibly many more millions by the first quarter of next year because Title 42 will go away. How do we absorb all that? What hit does that bring on the economy? Well, what it means is more people are going to be either seeking benefits, which is costly, or jobs, which are not going to be quite so plentiful. Right now, there's still a lot of job wanted out there. But when, as the economy slows, those are going to disappear very quickly. And so you're not going to have this rosy job picture, which the Federal Reserve thinks why they still have to put the real burdens on slowing down the economy, make the economy grow slower or go into a formal recession. But the fact of the matter is people are not better off where they were two years ago, and the next year is not going to make them better. And that's the bottom line. Let and me, it's so unnecessary. And let me show some more proof, and then we'll get back to what the White House could be doing and the Biden administration as a whole. A Federal Reserve report finds that American households lost $6.8 trillion in the first nine months of this year. That's across a total of 124 million households averaging $55,000 a piece. Your household personally in America losing $55,000, that's like somebody getting fired at the dinner table. Well, right. And so uh, the, the Biden administration will take some comfort. The markets have uh, gone up a little bit recently. 
but the trend line is flat to down. Wealth is being destroyed. We're seeing it in housing prices, wow. which were once booming. Now you can't sell and you can't buy because sellers can't afford to sell because of their mortgages. So it, it, it's a pretty rough situation. Real quickly, why won't the Biden administration at least tell us part of this um, now? Because it's coming anyway. They're about to tap the, the other type of oil reserve for heating. So, so you've, got, you've got the gasoline that you need to put in your car. And if we go by the way of countries like Switzerland, most of our grids, as you know, Steve, are based on fossil fuels. They're telling people don't plug in your electric vehicles or anything, you know, major that, that draws electricity. I mean, this is, this well, is unbelievable, actually. It is, and it's self-inflicted austerity, which hits the, hmm. hurts the most the people with the least. And then they say, oh, we have to help them out. Well, you could help them out by having a booming economy instead of deliberately depressing the economies the Federal Reserve is doing today and not creating conditions for the boom we know is within us. If they just get off our backs, cut our taxes, cut regulations, this is a vibrant... It's amazing how good the economy's held up despite all the abuses. But if you want to see the future, look at Europe or France, where they average 1% growth yeah. over a generation. That's not America, and it's not necessary. And I think that will be reversed in 2024. And I hope the Republicans start to show they mean what they say on spending in the next mm -hmm. couple of weeks when they have this omnibus, throw everything in the bucket, year-end resolution, right. and throw in hundreds of billions or more in spending. Let's see if they stand up and say, no, yeah. flat, no more increases. Time for Republicans to show their cards. If they're real, yeah. Uh, the boom we have within us as Americans... That's the positive that I'm going to take from you because we Absolutely. can get our way out of it. Absolutely. Steve Forbes, thank you so very much. Part Merry of our Christmas DNA. To you. <laughs> Absolutely. We're special thank in America. You. We can get it done. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-host Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.